Hello and welcome back to another day of CCU savings. For those of us that have played this game for any amount of time, we know this alpha environment has some frustrating bugs from time to time. We also know that sometimes you just have to stop and enjoy some of the amazing views and experiences that this game can produce, even in its alpha environment. Even if one of those bugs snaps you back into alpha reality because of a bug, right in the middle of enjoying one of your favorite parts of the game. Today, IAE welcomes in Consolidated Outland, Argo, Grey Cat, and Kruger to the Expo. With these manufacturers entering the Expo, we also have some new Warbond CCU to take a look at. First up is the Mole. With a Warbonded Mole, we've got the Vanguard Harbinger as the best choice. Again, as it goes down the price stack, you lose money and leave it on the table, so that's the best one to do it. Even if you had like the Blade or the Vanguard Sentinel, for instance. Here, let me show you. So if you take the Vanguard Harbinger, like I suggest, it's $5 with a difference of 20 bucks. Did I get that right, $20? Yeah, okay, wow, you saved 20 bucks. So instead, if you chose any of these other three, let's say the Vanguard Sentinel, actually let's keep it the Blade just to make the naming easier. Um, the Blade is 275, it costs you $20, and you save that same $20, right? Because this would be uh, $275 plus this, which is $295, same $20 saved, okay? What you could also do instead is, let's say you had a previous Blade Warbond CCU, maybe from last Alien Week, and instead you upgrade that to a Vanguard Harbinger that you get on Warbond maybe next week, during Invictus or something, or sorry, not next week, next uh, year <laughs> in Invictus. Um, and let's say it costs you five bucks, you save 10 because that's what this would uh, account to. And then guess what? You're perfectly lined up for the Harbinger to go into the mole. And that's kind of what we would speculate on and what we would hope for in the future. Okay, so moving on from the mole, the next one that we have, which is awesome because it is an a new vehicle is the SRV. So with this one, the Razor makes the best choice as well. Again, $5 for a decent amount of savings. Uh, these other ones don't have as good a savings, but you may have had uh, some other CCUs, War Bonds, Concept, etc., for the Ballista or the whole B or even the Hornet Tracker in the past. Um, so those would make sense. If you've already got these in the chain, right, then it makes sense to do a $10 upgrade. Um, again, only if you have a previous Warbond CCU to one of these vehicles, and that chain is already pretty much set in stone. Uh, otherwise, I would definitely go for the Razor. That makes sense. For those of you also playing the referral game, um, the Speed Racer, I don't know why they called it that. Um, <laughs> the Razor is available after you've uh, brought in 75 people to the game as recruits. So that makes it a, a choice, a choice vehicle to use for an SRV upgrade as well. Um, if you can grab 75 people and bring them into the verse, um, I think this is a really good stepping stone to try and get to because there's lots of vehicles that are just a little bit more expensive than the Razor. I'm thinking like Prospector and SRV uh, right off the bat. I think the A1's close. Um, there's lots of vehicles at the like 150 to 175 range that this would take a huge chunk out of the savings or a huge chunk out of the cost and, and obviously save you $145 if you can get to that point. So it's something, uh, something else to think about. One more way to save. Jumping again over to standalone ship offerings, the SRV is available on Warbond, so new money gets a discount. Uh, standard pricing is 165, so that is a $15 discount. Again, new money. At rolling down the screen, let me do it quicker. The Pioneer was available. Um, it's already sold out, but I wanted to go over it just so you guys get a, an understanding of, of the concept Warbond thing here. 
So war bond just means new money must be used to purchase this vehicle or CCU or whatever, right? Concept means it's not in the verse yet and they're either working on it or they will work on it at some future state. That's kind of where the BMM is currently. Uh, so this is like a, a really good discount because it's concept pricing. As you can see here, the concept pricing alone is 850 bucks and the war bond on the concept price ship is hundred dollars less. This 850 will absolutely go up when the ship hits production, uh, goes live in the environment. You can make it playable, etc. Um, I don't know what it'll go to. Who knows, man? Maybe 950. Maybe, maybe it'll be more or less than the uh, the 890 jump. Who knows? I think it's got way more utility than 890 jump. But again, that's uh, it's got the luxury tax on it. So who knows? Right now, though, 750 out the door, and you cannot CCU to this ship. Now that I've said it, I'm going to go double check that to make sure. Uh, I don't think it's possible, though. Just go in reverse order. A2 Hercules. So it looks like the A2 right now, they may have some more expensive ships come up. Um, trying to think what might be more expensive than that. Maybe the Orion or something. I don't know. Um, whenever those ship manufacturers uh, have their day in the expo, they will be added to this, whether or not their uh, war bond is, is yet to be determined, right? But that's how, that's how this list keeps growing. As you, as you see every day, I've got to scroll more and more and more. Um, it's because those ships get added to this right-hand column and it expands the list. So I think there may be more expensive ships that you can CCU to, but the Pioneer is not one of them. So if you're somebody who really absolutely wants the Pioneer, um, you're going to have to play the uh, the timing game and you'll probably have a couple seconds to purchase it when they go live next year at IAE. Um, they may offer it at some other point as well. Um, I think there's a list somewhere. I'll try and find the list and show it in the next video of when the, um, when the limited sale number ships uh, come up for sale. It's, it's on the day of the manufacturer being in the expo. Uh, I just, I don't know what time it is, uh, but I'll try and find that and put it in the next video. Uh, that's it for standalone ships. There are some extra packs as well. Um, oh, here's the other thing. The Pioneer can't be bought with LTI which surprised the hell out of me, right? There's, it, it's a war bond, or it, I'm sorry, it has a war bond available if you, again, if you grab it, but if you open this up, let me go back to it, why is my, everything's failing, okay. Um, if you go back to it, it's only 10 years of insurance, which baffles me because A, it's a $750 ship, and B, it is a war bond, so this one's kind of surprising, uh, but that's the way it is. There are some packs here that are new and available. Um, the Rough and Ready pack, boy, that's a, that's a name, isn't it? Um, it? It seems like a decent deal. If you get it on Warbond, it's under 300 bucks for two ships that cost more than 150 bucks a piece. Um, it's a decent discount if you just want to have it and you don't want to deal with the whole CCU game. Um, I get it. It's not the game that everyone can play, especially because it takes a really long time sometimes to finalize your chains. Uh, again, you've got the Argo Complete Pack, which is new down here. Uh, it's a, one, of those, one of those expensive ones. It's got a lot in it though. Let's see, MPUV Cargo, Personnel, which are effectively useless right now, but in the future, they may have some decent uses. The SRV, the Raft, and the Mole are really what you're paying for right now. These are inexpensive ships. Uh, it still seems to be a decent deal, I guess, but uh, that's up to you. If you've got that kind of money and you don't want to play the actual long-term CCU game, that's a quick way to get a discount on a couple Argo ships. There you go. Um, I think we went over the others. The Tumble Complete Package and the Zeus Trio and... Yep, I think we went over all these. So I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Anyway, I don't understand why they don't give LTI on these uh, multi-packs or larger larger packs that cost more money. Uh, it's just 10 year on all of them. So I, I don't know, maybe 10 years is fine. Maybe LTI is what's needed. We're not gonna really know until they put insurance in the game and we all kind of figure out what it's gonna cost. But realistically guys, 
10 years is plenty. Hell, three years is probably plenty for most of this stuff because look, if we're playing now, right? We're already, we're already in the verse. We know how to make money. We'll get better at it. By the time release comes, all of that will change on how you make money. But most of us are gonna have enough ships that we can make as much money as we want by the end of a three year insurance term where we have to start paying in monthly or however they're gonna do it, like in-game money. And uh, yeah, it'll be probably trivial at that point, unless you have some sort of massive, like I own every ship in the game. But look, if you're paying as much money as that would cost, uh, I can't imagine you wouldn't just, you know, buy in-game credits or something. I don't know. It just seems like LTI is blown out of proportion. It's nice to have because you never have to worry about it guaranteed, but geez, 10 years is probably enough. So I wouldn't stress too much about ensuring you have LTI insurance on all of your vehicles. 10 years is probably plenty, so don't stress about it. I just think that would be a nice bonus when you're spending $300 on a package worth of ships and it's a war bond, so it's guaranteed new money. I figured it should just be LTI, you know? I don't know, that's just me. Well, that's it for day six CCU savings, folks. Keep on saving that money, citizens. Zytec out.